Evening, guys. We soon start. All right. I'm just waiting for at least a quorum of students to be here. Good evening, Mr. Clark. Hi, Sir, evening. Yes. How are you? I'm doing good. This is Diane Jackson. Hi, Miss Jackson. Okay. So I understand that you have a WhatsApp group. Yes. Um. Just allow me. Just give me a few minutes, okay? I'm just going to wait till everybody starts. I'll share the link in the chat. All right, I won't be able to select the link. Can I just send you my number privately and your admin to it, please? No, so Romari, are you the other admin? Can you just um, do that for her, please? Thanks. Oh, no problem. All right, thank you. Welcome. I sent it in here, Mario. Okay, sure. I sent it in. Um, I sent you a private message in the chat. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I don't tell you. All right, evening, guys. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Evening, sir. Yes. Evening, sir. Yes. All right. Um, so I know there's one person who's new. Is there anybody else who's joining the class for the first time? Anyone else joining us for the first time? Okay. All right, so remember we said that before I get into the lecture, remember we said that the we had looked at the new course outline and we realized that the final exam, there's no final written exam. The final exam is a practical exam. And I did indicate to you already what the practical exam will be. It's you're going to develop a public relations plan for an up and coming artist, and you're going to execute parts of that plan. Um, I'm going to put some of the examples on um on Canvas, um, what I want for persons to do is to put yourselves in your groups. So it's up to groups of seven. All right, so there should be no more than four groups because I'm seeing 35 students. So it balances out. Um, so it should be no more than seven in each group. And for that final, for the final project, all right, all the other things, um, the mid semester, of course, is going to be individual. The press release, I'm going to ask you to write probably one or two press releases or develop a, pre no, 
if I remember the course outline, it's press kit plus press release, right? So I press kit on behalf of the up and coming artists and a press release on, on behalf of, of the up and coming artists. Um, so let's do that because we keep delaying and we have not. Um, can somebody, some persons had mentioned that they were in their groups. Um, as I said before, what I wanted to do was to just choose your groups randomly, allow um, Zoom to choose the groups randomly because that would have expedited the process a long time ago. You'd have met with the artists already and all of that. So I need to get that out of the way. Um, so should I just break you up guy, um, into the use the Zoom system to break, put you into groups. And then if you want to switch groups, that would be fine, but I need to get that off the ground because we keep, um, I, I, I've asked for the list. We only have 10 weeks or in week two. All right, and you have to do the, the practical exam. It's, I, it's for 50% of the final grade, if not 60% of the final grade. So it's very, very important that the planning part gets done because all of those things that you're going to do, they're going to be outside of the class. All right, you have to do your own little meetings and stuff like that. You have to meet at the RTs and, you know, probably some folk, those who are able to do like um, photo shoot, video shoot, whatever it is. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break, I'm going to put you into groups of four. And then when you're, and then come in each of the breakout room, because I'm going to ask you to choose a letter. And um, then you're going to work with that particular artist. Then no, if you want among yourselves, want to switch with people who you're with, were in groups with before, fine. But I need to get this off the ground. And I've asked for the list and I was not sent anything at all, all right? So I'm gonna put you into groups of four first, randomly. Um, when I say put you in groups of four, I mean, turn it. Um, uh, excuse me, sir, but if when you put us in groups of four and we go in the breakout room and select an artist, and we split from that group. You're not, split. Um, could you just listen, please? I never said that you're splitting from the group. I said you'd have to exchange. So if, for example, Marsha is in one group and you're in another group and you wish to switch groups, I have no problem. But at the end of the day, I need to get it off the ground because we're in week two. And remember one week is actually going to be um, some celebration of independence. So we might not even have school. I don't, I'm not sure what is going to happen at that point in time. I think it's the first week of August. That's um, independence and emancipation and all kinds of stuff that happens in that week. All right, so we need to get, and that, that is a time actually that you can use to kind of meet outside of class. So I'm putting in groups. I'm not, I should say I'm creating four groups. Let me rephrase. I'm creating four groups, not putting in groups of four. I'm creating four groups randomly i'm going to allow um zoom to, to create the groups when you're in the groups i'm going to come into the breakout in your respective breakout rooms if after we have had a discussion you want to switch with somebody um who is in another group you go right ahead because i'll allow you to give me the, the final group listing next week tuesday so i'll give you enough time to kind of talk among yourselves you have the whatsapp group people have everybody's number if you want to talk outside of the whatsapp group and you guys are very familiar with each other because most of you are coming from the same class all right or from the same you're in the same year but i need to get that off the ground and i don't want um it to be said that that part was ignored because it is just as important as attending the lectures. The assessment is very, very important because um, public relations in a, is a very practical course in the sense that you have to do things. It's not just writing documents or writing a plan, but it's also about executing the plan, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put it in groups. I keep saying put it in groups. So I'm gonna create four groups and it, the, the maximum is seven, all right, for the class. Everybody understands any questions? Sir, what if you already have a group? Um, you see, that's what I was told the very first class and I'm yet to get a list. So if you already have a group, all you need to do is to work out among yourselves and switch, 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 switch back into your groups. But I can't wait on that list because I've asked for it and we're in week two and I've not been provided that list. All right, so I'm gonna create, um, assign automatically by the system, it's not going to be created by me. I'm sure you guys are familiar with how Zoom works. It randomly puts you in groups. And then after that, no. Um, if you want to switch with persons to, until you get back to your original group, fine. But we need to get that part off the ground, okay? All right, so please go into the breakout rooms. And I'm gonna come in uh, uh, and I actually have a, 
I have the lecture to, to kind of complete because that too I have to be paying attention to. So Kumiko, Jessica and Kumiko, could you go into the breakout room, please? Not sure if you guys are actually there. Um, let me just. The contact details of these persons. I wonder if Leo would want to be a part of this because Leo does it again.
All right, so everybody is slowly coming out of the breakout room. Oh, you know who I could have used? Redance. Although I don't think he's... Could have used Redance. I know there was an, uh, somebody I was forgetting in the mix. Oh, and this other... There's a Rasta art. I'm forgetting him. Okay, are we back? Everybody's back. Okay. I was actually thinking, and this is just thinking out loud, that Mr. Lex, if anybody want, knows Mr. Lex, because if you want to switch the upcoming artist with a Mr. Lex, uh, because it's not that he is not a household name, it's just that his career has kind of waned. So either up and coming artist or an artist who is no longer as um, relevant or as current as the others. But let me get into the lecture because that's very important as well. So good evening again, everybody, and welcome to all persons who are here. I think some persons are joining us for the first time. All right, so today's lecture, we're going to move to unit two um, and the learning outcomes. Very important that we get a sense of what is it that we are trying to accomplish today into well, at least this week. So one, you should be able at the end of this lecture in, uh, uh, um, uh, into the next, um, how to examine the different publics of public relations, explain the advantages and disadvantages of public relations, assess the organization of a public relations department and its personnel, analyze the importance of ethics in public relations, and explore strategies for crisis management. And I'm almost sure we're going to look at crisis management um, on Thursday, not today. So the content involves, and you know, you're seeing the content. So Socrates, one of the great philosophers, has this saying, the way to gain a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you desire to appear. All right. So in other words, there must be a relationship between your, uh, your appearance and that, which you're, um, and that which you're able to deliver. So let us say, for example, that you, your company is known, for example, for very good customer service. It means, therefore, that at every touch point, um, that somebody interacts with your company or with your brand, they should be treated with dignity and respect as a customer. This thing is not switching. Oh, I wanted to switch. So reminders. So one of the big reminders um, is that a definition of public relations, meaning of the process of maintaining a favorable image and building um, beneficial relationships between an organization and the public communities, groups, and people it serves. In other words, maintaining a favorable image between um, uh, an organization and its stakeholders. Unlike, ad unlike advertising, which tries to create favorable impressions through paid messages, public relations does not pay for attention and publicity. And we will see if that is true. All right, we're going to explore whether or not um, that is actually the case now in terms of current practice in public relations. Uh, another reminder is that PR strives to earn a favorable image by drawing attention to newsworthy and attention worthy activities of an organization and its customers. And let me ask this, what did we do for Father's Day? Anybody has, you know, did anybody do something special for your father or for your grandfather? or for your child's father or children's father? I'm listening. No, sir, mine is going to be delayed. Okay, all right, yes. I see somebody posting in the chat. All right, somebody made a call. Yes, go ahead. Um, was my husband's favorite chocolate, um, but I did a wrapper. Mm -hmm. thingy and the contents are like a hundred percent confidence as in you know the food label mm -hmm. something like that and his face on the front all right very nice called but didn't get through yes I, I, the other question i want to ask you 
can you think of anything that has been done for Father's Day by any company in Jamaica that you say, oh, wow, this is a very good moment for fathers, for the celebration of fathers? Sorry, you mean companies yeah, or any school businesses? Businesses, companies, whichever one. Well, I've seen some spa specials for Father's Day. Okay, specials for Father's Day. Anybody else? Sure, there was this thing that um, was done by the government. I'm mm -hmm. not, I can't remember, but the person that presented the awards mm -hmm. was Bobsy Grange to the two mm -hmm. fathers who lost their, their child to tragic um situations mm -hmm. so ananda dean and shanice dean father got an award as well as jasmine dean father yes very nice and it, would you say that that's that's a that's an example of public relations i would because it kind of lets people it kind of stray their mind a bit from the negative thoughts that they have about mm. the government exactly Right. So in other words, because remember, Babsy Grange is what? She's the Minister of Culture, Gender and Sports, right? And so she wants to demonstrate to the public that the government also values fathers, especially fathers who have lost their children, right? And especially within this context, you're mentioning that we just heard of a very, very, very tragic and horrifying situation where a mother and her four children were, were murdered, Right. So, again, the government itself has to maintain a favorable image in the, in, the, in, this, in the eyes of the public. Very, very important. So do PROs pay for any media? So usually, you know, um, public relations, we say that PR for, for companies do not pay for public relations or they do not pay for press. Um, it's usually earned or it is free. What do you guys think? Do you think it's, 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 um, do, do you think companies pay for media attention or, or, you know, I'm not talking about advertising. I'm talking about like when they have newsworthy stories, do they pay for it or should they pay for it? What are your, what are your thoughts? And what you're thinking um sir i think because some companies um do pay if they mm -hmm. do work that they believe is worthy of a certain type of attention mm -hmm. they do it to get um to build their reputation mm -hmm. so i think some companies do that and i don't really think anything is wrong with that okay um somebody else was about to say something as well That's fine. It's okay. All right. So as an industry undergoing massive changes with journalists fleeing to brands and budgets shifting to data-driven metrics, PR stands at a fork in the road, which requires both a new way of, of thinking and new diverse skill sets. In other words, probably the way, because of the rise of new media, um, the rise of what I call programmatic media, and the fact that communication is no longer one-dimensional or even two-dimensional, but it's now multi-dimensional. And I'm not sure if you have ever heard the term of omnichannel communication um, or omnichannel touch points. Um, in other words, all those places or spaces where someone can engage in your brand, probably public relations officers themselves need to rethink their approach to media. And, and in terms of um, public image management and crisis management. Um, so, what has happened, many of the experts in public relations have argued that there needs to be a rethinking of how public relations officers um, get notoriety or get press coverage for their company. This notion that they just use owned media, meaning, for example, create their content and all of that, um, or earned media, for example, publicity, media relations and all of that, probably there are instances in which they need to pay for it. So Facebook sponsored posts, sponsored tweets, Twitter cards, fan, fan acquisition, lead generation, um, outbrain. Probably there is a there is room for media, public relations officers and public relations department now moving away from this model of just relying on owned media, which is the O in PISO, or earned media, which is the E in PISO. 
And let us look at, um, oh yes, I wanted to, 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 to make mention of the fact that what has been happening now, because of the, the new dynamics with the, the emergence of, of, of um, new media and all these various ways of how consumers now are, are getting information and also how consumers themselves are affecting how businesses um, communicate with them. Public relations officers now have to know, kind of move away from the old traditional way of, of managing um, a company's image or a brand's image. So this says, is PR changing due to, I can't see this, is PR changing due to new media? There is a misguided perception in public relations uh, in the PR industry that all we do is media relations. Get your boss or client on the front page of the New York Times and all your troubles will vanish. That, of course, is an old paradigm. The industry used to measure media impressions and advertising equivalences. Today, however, we have tools at our fingertips to push a fully integrated program that delivers real organizational results. And we're going to look at some of those specific examples. In other words, the old dynamic or the old paradigm of just getting people on the front page of, of traditional media, that is no longer the model because um, there are several ways you now of how um, companies interact with, um, with their customers or with their stakeholders. And also to, because these stakeholders can also um, significantly affect the image of a particular brand in, in, uh, in various touch points, um, PR officers who are responsible for image management, they have to change the way how they operate. So is PR changing due to new media continuing? If you aren't using P the PISA model for your communications work and measuring the meaningful metrics that help an organization grow, you will not have a job in 10 years. And I'm going to explain what this actually means is that public relations officers now have to also be data driven. It can't be that you're just writing a press release and you write it in, 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 um, in a kind of vacuum. I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard, for example, about um, search engine optimization. Anybody has ever heard about search engine optimization? Yes, sir. Right. So one of the things, search engine optimization just means that people are able to find your brand or your company on Google search engine. And Google search engine is the number one search engine in the world. All right. So while historically the PR side of communications purely thought in terms of organic, there are increasing opportunities to make paid and organic work together. Equipped with analytics, which is the light that brings clarity to both organic and paid content, PR professionals gain insights into what types of content works best. Then they can track, test, and iterate to optimize future campaigns. And this is something that I used to do, and we used to, um, I used to do when I was a PR. PRO at Excel, and when I was the head of marketing, one of the things that you're able to do, for example, with Google Analytics, is to see the number of pages that your your website visitors are are, are on, how long they're staying on the pages, and which content they are engaging in. This is something that would be very not would be very important and relevant not only to the marketing officer but also to the public relations officer. Also, too, if it is that per, if you are in the business of selling, let us say you're selling marbles or purses or colognes, you need to know the terms that people are using to search for colognes. So the public relations officer, when he or she puts out a press release, they have to ensure that those what are called key words and key phrases are in the press release because you want to be you want your company or your brand to be able to be um, to be um, let's say crawlable or searchable on Google search engine. So the old paradigm of public relations is defunct. I know PR officers have to kind of rethink how they operate and how they're able to achieve organizational, institutional, organizational and, and, and um, org, um, operational goals. So the emergence of native advertising and content marketing has also played an integral role in the, sh in the, shifting, in the shifting PR um, tides. So content marketing, and not because it has the word marketing beside it means that necessarily that you are selling a product, right? What happens here, and, I, and I'm going to look, we're going to look at some examples, is that you're going to create engaging content, which sometimes is not about selling a product. Sometimes all you're doing is showcasing the experience, 
All right, and I have some examples. So this is an example of the PESA model. So in terms of paid media, exchanging money for distribution, whether an ad or content, a perfect example of where this becomes, um, this becomes relevant in public relations is, uh, I'm sure you guys are aware of graduation and award ceremony at, at Excelsior, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Right. So if, for example, our valedictorian, um, her GPA or his GPA is four point something something, why would I not want to put that in the newspaper? Let us say, for example, that one of our awardees at Excelsior, one of the award ceremony, um, is promoted at work to become a general manager. Why would I not want to put that in the Gleaner that is read by over half a million Jamaicans? That is paid PR. It is not marketing because I'm not selling any product. All I'm trying to do is to showcase the fact that the, the, the experience of our students are so good to the point where they're being promoted in the corporate world. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. So earned note, trading valuable content for an established authorities um, um, audience. This is where the notion of content marketing comes into play. And, and, and sometimes I don't necessarily like the term content marketing, the, the term marketing beside it, because it's really content engagement. And I, I'll, I'll give you an example. So earning no, so earn, this is earned media. How do people earn media, um, let us say on social, um, social networking sites? Perfect example, if I, one of the strategies that a peer officer could use, for example, is to ask the math teacher or a teacher of English or the bio teacher to create a video that is showing students how to answer past paper questions, whether it be CSEC or CAPE, and we put it on social media, of course, what? Persons are going to engage with it because students want to know how to work, you know, questions in section two or how to actually, you know, use a particular formula for physics or, or whatever. And when they are engaging, they are also going to share that content. So that is what? Earned media because I have earned the the engagement of people, right? And what happens, a lot of companies over time become, when it says you become authority, um, established authority on certain subject matter. Let me give you a different example. If I own a company that sells, uh, let's say, uh, car parts. Let's just say I own a company that's, uh, that, 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 that sells car parts, right? Marketing as a particular function, you know, in, in communicating value, creating value and, and getting value in exchange. And, you know, they're going to create, you know, um, the sales promotion and all of that. How public relations comes into that now is that I can, I can develop what is called a content marketing strategy by just showing, for example, how to change your oil, how to change a tire how to um, wash your car properly, what to use to wash your car, what not to use to wash um, your car, whether you should eat in your car, whether you should not eat in your car. Over time, because I'm putting out these videos, like one minute video, two minute video, I become what? An authority. So when people actually want to learn how to change their tires, they say, oh, you know, um, that company, you know, they, they have a quick video, how to change tires. I just watch the video. What happens over time is that I develop goodwill in the marketplace because people now come to me for what? Everything relating to car. Do we understand? And yes, that sir. again is earned yes, media. And you have many companies, they rely heavily on earned media. They just want to become an authority in the marketplace so, um, so that when people are thinking about anything, they think them. Just think about Google. Google is unknown, but Google is also you know what a verb. People just say, oh, just Google it because they have earned they have become an established authority in the marketplace for actually giving people answers um, when they search. All right, shared now, amplifying content through your own audience. So shared media now is where you sometimes um, share media, you might, it's called curate, an example is curated content. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the term curated content, where what you do, you share the content or secondary content created by others. But of course, it shows that you are able to, um, that these particular, that you not only rely on the authority of your brand, but you also echo the, the, the authority of other, of other brands. All right. So you're constantly sharing the content um, on your platform of other people. Also to amplifying content throughout also uh, means that you have a particular content. I'm not sure. Have you guys ever heard about um, the term, what do you call it again? 
is it green content? It's called green content. Let me just make sure it's not green content. I'm, I, it's green in it, but my brain is frazzled. I went, uh, let me just quickly look it up. It's not green content. Evergreen content, yes. Ever, have you ever heard the term evergreen content? No, so is it about oh, recycling? Say that again. If it's about no, recycling. Sir. Yeah, so it's somewhat recycling. Um, in other words, you create content that can be repurposed over time. So I usually say to my, 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 my staff when I was the head of marketing is that it's better to create more um, evergreen content because if you don't have an internal um, creative team, then you're constantly have to be contracting vendors to do that. Then you have owned um, media and it says, aggregating an audience that seeks you out for content and then distributing your content to their audience. Also to own media is not just, that's not the only way of thinking about own media. Own media also means everything that is owned um, by a company that they use for communication and public relations. So it might be their website, your social media handle. It could be um, if they have a, like a e-zine, which is a digital magazine, if they have a print magazine, if they have like a, a podcast, if they have a YouTube channel, all of these things are own media. They're using all of these particular uh, communication channels to, to achieve their public relations um, goals. So let's, an example from the school of them. So let's watch and see if there are any examples of PESO in this video. And I want to just remind us what PESO means, all right? Uh, is it possible for me to put this in there now? All right, let me see if I can get it. Cause I want you guys to, where did I save it? I think I saved it in this when I was creating the lecture. Courses, public relations, summer, lectures, week two. Oh, where's my peso? Peso, peso. That's not peso. What the? Then what the? Where's peso here? Where did I say peso? I'm not seeing it here. Oh, here it is. All right, are you guys seeing it in the chat? No, sir. Yes, Check sir. Again. Image. Yes, all right, seeing the image. So what I want for you to do for me now is to watch this example is from the school of them. And I want for you to tell me if you see any example of paid, an example of earned, any example of shared, any example of owned. All right. Let's, oh Lord, don't tell me I can't copy this thing. All right. Let's bring this up. Let's see if it works. Well, let me, I don't think I turned on my, my volume. So let's go there. Share sound for me, please. Let's listen a, a little. Can I turn are you, it on? Are you, did you hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Hold on. I'm not going to play all of it, though, but... I got this feeling inside my bones. It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on. All from my city, all from my home. We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it. Moving so phenomenally. When you dance, dance, dance Feel a good, good creeping up on you So just dance, dance 
Cause I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally You're more like the way we rock it So don't stop that I love that song. <laughs> yeah, so talk to me now, guys. What do you think? I only saw, like, for me, two stood out the most. Mm -hmm. um, one being earned and the other owned. All right, so which one would you say is earned and which one would you say is owned? What, the, what is the example of earned and what is your example of owned? So for earned... Excelsior Tourism, the tourism department mm -hmm. would trade the valuable uh, service, well, would I say service, but the content that was shown mm -hmm. to the people for their money. So which means that um, whatever money you pay for your school fee, you are guaranteed to get world-class teaching, hands-on experience while learning the skills that are needed for the hospitality and tourism and entertainment industry. Mm. All right, so one clarification though. So remember, earned media does not mean, it. so these are examples of earned media, publicity, uh, media relations, blogger relations, investor relations. These are examples. Info, in so this is the photo you sent in the chat. I couldn't download it. I'm oh, sorry, it was placed in the WhatsApp group as well. I'm not sure if you saw that. Hold on. Yeah, so earned media now is, in other words, where there is an interest in what you have shared by the public. So people are liking it, people are, people are commenting, people are sharing it, that kind of thing. Understand? Got it. Yes. So... Um, so earned media in this case would be the publicity. And we're going to look at some of, uh, some of the examples. Um, I think you said owned as well? Uh, yeah, I said owned. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I, what I would have said, I wouldn't really necessarily, based on what I'm seeing here. Okay. I'm changing my but based, mind. But based on what I also said about owned media, in other words, all the communication platforms or all the platforms that are used to achieve your PR objectives would be owned media. So a website um, is owned media. In other words, it is owned by the company. That's another way of what I wanted to think about owned. So I was thinking in that way, but because you said from the video, I wasn't necessarily seeing the Excelsior website. So I, I, oh, okay, I okay, okay. have to talk from what I know mm -hmm. that they have the website. All right, so they, yeah, you're correct. Website. So let me let us look at it this way then. So here, there, here are some examples now of the PESA model, right? So if you look now, so it, so first of all, do we agree that that video is more? It is the purpose of it is to achieve um, would be would fall under the umbrella of public relations and not marketing. Do we accept that? Yes, sir. Right. So here, here so. Um, public relations, the face of public relations is changing, right? Now we are seeing, so I, I was the one that posted the video actually when I, if you see published by Robin Clark, March 14, 2019, I was the one that actually published it. I didn't create the video, the video was created by Dr. Gudapati. Um, notice how many people were reached? To over 12,000. How many comments, how many reactions, comments and shares? This is shared media, this is shared media, 483. Right? 
how many um three to five three second video views 5.9 thousand almost six thousand persons right but hear what some of it was earned and some of it was paid so i when i was um the, the head of marketing what i did i spent five i think it was either five or ten us dollar to get it out into the marketplace because i know that it would have created a lot of goodwill in the marketplace and it would actually help to raise the level the profile of the school of tourism so you see how all of them come together now this is a perfect example of paid meaning that i actually paid for the video to reach a larger audience in other words it's called on facebook it's called a sponsored ad but not because it says ad, it means that it's an advertisement. That's just the term they use, right? Earned media. In other words, I um I earned the people who I reached, the comments, the this, the that, the that, the that, the that. The shared is the fact that people are sharing it and it's also placed on social media. But also, too, we shared it on Instagram. We shared it on our YouTube channel. This is just one example. We shared it on our YouTube, tra our, our YouTube channel. Right, so this is now why I say to you that the face of public relations is changing because you, we, I can know now that this kind of content is more engaging with the kind with, with our publics versus if I had put out a static ad or just a normal post. Am I making sense, guys? So yes. Can you just clarify the difference between the marketing and the public relations? Because it's still um, kind of coding in my mind. All right. So with marketing, no. So so with marketing, no. What you're doing, you're really creating value, communicating value in exchange for value. What do I mean by that? You are going to create value by telling people that they need this. You know, if you look at an ad, you need this. You know, if you if you need to pay less insurance, buy, um, buy a, a BMW or buy a Toyota Corolla, right? The value that you get in exchange is when they actually pay you the money. So you create value for them. You create value by creating the need that they are, are creating uh, uh, the answer to their problem. For public relations, no, what you're doing, you're managing the image of the company. The image of the company goes way beyond just the products. The image of the company includes the internal staff, the external staff, the relationship you have with all the government um, bodies and entities that you have to interact with. For example, Excelsior Community College, we have our students who are customers, but we also work with um, Triple CJ. We also, so the kind, the way how I communicate with Triple CJ when I'm writing a letter, the tone of the letter, um, I'm sure you remember when the incident happened on, on the campus when the student was shot. In a case like that, the marketing officer cannot speak on behalf of the, of the institution. It has to be the public relations officer because um, that function is about protecting the image of the college. It is not about selling the courses. I hope that to some extent helps. Yes, sir, thanks. Yes, no problems. So again, I go back to the fact now. So if, for example, you're, and we're going to look at some of the organizational structure, um, look at organizational structures and where PR fits in. If you are employed as a public relations officer and you create a plan and you have a budget, the, 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 your boss or your superior might say, why should I spend $5 million on this? Then you can use an example like this or say, okay, sir, the reason you should spend um, a, a, a $5 million on this is because we would want to reach 5 million people. So in order for us to reach 5 million people, we would have to use paid media. And JPS does this a lot. I'm sure you, you get a lot of text messages in Jamaica, SMS messages from JPS. And it's not just about paying your bills. Sometimes it's about, you know, hurricane tips. And that is actually paid public relations. All right. So public relations has become a data-driven profession. Um, let's look at KLAS, and I was there, and they still owe me. I was there, social media coordinator for the Olympics, the school, the high school football, schoolboy football, and they wanted me for another thing, and I said no, because they owe me, and they still owe me. I think I'm going to take them to court. All right, um, let me just share, or oh, let me, 
Probably I just need to. Let's look at another example. Are you still seeing my screen? No? Let me reshare. I don't think you're seeing that part. Mm. So we were seeing your screen. Oh, yeah. oh, are you seeing KLAS? Yes, we are. All right. So let's look at this note. So this is earned media. They have put it, they have, they have posted something, um, posted something on Instagram. Only three persons. Because you notice it's not very not getting a lot of engagement. They posted what the minister said on Instagram. Engagement. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to prove you wrong. This is the, I think this is the Carifta Games. Three. Carifta. They wanted me to do Carifta, but I, I demanded pay because they still owe me almost 20,000. Notice low engagement because they're not professionals. And, and the guy thought that he would be able to do it because I did it and made it seem so easy. He thought that he would do it and you know achieve what I achieved. Notice the low engagement. Notice the low engagement. Low engagement. I'm going to tell you where I when I start. So I posted this. Notice I liked it. I posted this. And this is not paid. How many? Um, this is over 12 persons. Let's go again. I posted this over 974 79 comments 71 shares everything else i put i posted about shelly and fraser 2.5 this is in other words 2500 persons this is not paid this is earned media i posted this not many people are familiar with this box so i don't think we'd have got much engagement i posted this i posted this over 300, I put, oh, this was a problem. I posted it two times. I posted this, 96, a little better. All of these are from me, from me, from me. All of these are mine. And the other part, this is over 100. This is over 11,000. I posted this, right? Because what happened at the time I sat down and I developed a public relations plan for them. And I could measure the success of my PR plan. Because some persons believe that public relations is just a post. They don't understand that you actually have to sit down and actually come up with a strategy. And in that strategy, you have to have objectives, you have to have tactics, and you have to have KPIs. All right, so that was another, um, that's an example again of the PESA model in operation. Any questions? Sir, um, in re relation to the, the, the JCF and their recent course, I mean, you can tell that somebody, there's probably like a shift. Yes, Would exactly, you... exactly. They have no, they have gotten a professional because they realize that in order to protect their image and also to develop some amount of goodwill in the marketplace is that you need a professional professional at the helm. You can't have every, every anybody. And this is the problem with some companies, why they don't get much out of social media. They think social media is just, oh, I just put up a post. And they say, oh, but oh, nobody now like it. It could be that if you have a business page, you need followers. If you don't have followers, then how people are going to know that you actually, um, you're putting out anything for the public. All right, so, so that's a very good example. So public relations uh, tools that are used, these are not all the tools, but these are the ones that are predominantly used. Press releases, interviews, whether they are on TV interviews or radio interviews, special TV shows, press conferences, photo releases, PR, event, PR events, articles and so forth. So these are some of the tools that are used to achieve the particular objectives. And also there's something called public relations marketing. In other words, you're using marketing platforms to achieve your public relations objectives. All right, so do we, are we, any questions relating to the tools? No, sir. Okay. All right, tell me which tools would you use and why? For the highlighted ones or yeah 
yeah so what i'm going to do i'm going to um let, let's just let me put it in the breakout room and do i need to do that let me see how many because i have a lot i want to cover no let's do it together because I, I really don't want this let me just see something along here no i have a lot of cover no so let's discuss it because I have a lot to cover. I want to cover some of those things. So if, for example, um, your organization develops an innovative technology or approach that is different and better than anything else, what PR tools would you use to um, inform the stakeholders? What PR tool or tools would you use? So a press release, maybe, and a PR All right. event, probably. All right, so a, a press release. Um, probably a product launch. It sounds as if you're talking about a product launch. Anything else? Anybody else? You could use the TV show special. A TV show special? That one, yes. Sir. What do you mean by that? Could you just say a little bit more? One of the tools that you have says special TV show. So I'm saying you could do something like that. So Yeah, but you have to tell me what you mean by that, though. What do um, you understand special TV shows to mean? Sir, maybe like. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of an example. Innovative technology or approach that is different. You could do what is called what is called product placement. I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard the term product placement. Um, have you ever been watching, have you ever watched some movies and you see that they're using certain brands and the brands are very prominent? Like when they are thirsty, they just drink and you see the Pepsi Cola, very like the camera just zooms in on Pepsi Cola. The zooms in on it. I'm sure you have seen movies where, and it's literally, it's called product placement. What they're really doing is advertising, quote unquote, advertising the brand in the movie. So what you could do also for this is you could do, you know, I'm sure you have seen where Costco in Jamaica, they invite in um, TV, of course they pay for it, and they're just walking the stores. So we have Costco? Yeah, Not Costco. Bashko, oh. sorry. <laughs> Bashko. Yes, it's sorry, yeah, In the wrong country. Remember, they had, the, the they had to change the name. I'm in the wrong country. Yes, that's it. I'm in the wrong country. And they and they walk around and they're not telling you necessarily to come and buy. No, they're just saying that, you know, if you live, um, if you have a garden, you can use this to do that and that and that. It's PR. It is public relations. And it's really public relations marketing. So they're not telling you to come and buy, but when you're there watching, they're creating different problems in your minds so that you can say, oh, you know, I probably need, I, I probably need that shovel, you know, or I need that coat or, you know, they, they, and in my, it, like where I live, it's very seasonal. So they're very, so, so you find that PR, PR office, public relations officers, and even marketers, they are very seasonal in terms of the kinds of content that they engage in. So like, no, you see a lot of content um, relating to um, wearing shorts and t-shirt and going to the beach and stuff like that and family events and barbecue and stuff like that because the time is very, very, very warm. By the time we get into September and it starts getting cold, you see people start throwing you cold jackets, da, da, da. So, so that is something that we could, uh, and that's a, that's a PR thing that you could do, a kind of TV event where you invite the media, um, whether it be into your store or you show them how to use the product. You could actually create YouTube videos and show, show people how to use the product, right? And say, okay, we have this new thing. And if you, um, it is able to do this and she's able to do that. They're not telling you to buy it, but they are telling you to buy it. I hope you understand that. So they are not telling you to buy it, but they are telling you to buy it. All right, so companies are very strategic. And this is why, I, again, I say to you that people have to be professionally trained when you are going to engage in public relations. What about the second one? One of your products wins a best in category prize awarded by a trade group. What kind of PR would you PR tool would you use? An interview, maybe. You could do an interview, yes. Whether it be TV or radio, anything else you could do? You could, I wouldn't write an, well, you could write a press release, but I probably would just do what Yui has done. You, you remember when Yui was awarded or they were ranked one of the top universities in the Latin America? 
and there was this big media splash, I would do something like that, like just put something like in the glean, take a, a, a one pager and say, um, congratulations um, to, let's say, Red Stripe, number one in X and Y, X and Y. Because putting it in the glean, you know, even though it comes as a quote unquote ad, it is actually public relations marketing because you're not selling anything. It is a congratulatory thing. All right. So and 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 um and you you always have the distinction between PR and marketing is that marketing is really selling goods and services. All right. Um, what about the third one? You enter into a partnership with another organization to collaborate on providing broader and more complete services to a target market segment. What PR tool or tools would you use? And there is silence. Is there a press release? Yes, you could use a press release. And remember, the press release does not only have to be written. As I said to you before, some companies now actually want audio for their press release. All right. So, um, and I'm, let me just show you. I'm sure you guys would be familiar, but. This would be, oh, let's say, I don't want to click on any politician. All right, let's just click on something that is, I really don't want to click on closed up, but it would sound something like this. They usually have, no, they don't have anything there. Let's see. Um, let's see something here. Right, so it would sound something like this. The SOEs that have been put in place by this government are some of the most, most human rights centered SOEs. All right, so if it is that you are going to send a press release, let's just say Excelsior is going to send a press release, somebody who has a relatively good speaking voice, minister with responsibility for information, da, 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 is sitting back at the opposition, is con contending that the states of, and what happens now when you send the press release and you send the audio, they can actually quote, let us say it is Excel, so they can actually quote Mr. McCarthy and play his audio over the air. They don't want to constantly be reading everything. They actually want the public to hear the voice of the principal or the voice or voices of the vice principals. Understand? Hello. Please. Okay. All right. So we can come back to the rest of them. All right. So public relations techniques, media relations, influencer analyst relations, public relations and thought leadership events, sponsorships, award programs, crisis management, which is very, very important. And in terms of media relations, here they are giving you the examples, press release, press kit, an interview leading to a news article about a new product launch, press conference. All right. Influenza or analyst relations, product review published by a renowned blogger, company profiled by an industry analyst, celebrity endorsement. Um, and the, what has been happening now, instead of cele celebrity um, endorsements, you now have what are called community um, based um, endorsers. In other words, I don't want to buy a product that is endorsed by Kim Kardashian because I'm going to, in my mind, I'm going to say, oh, that's just, you know, she's just, she was just paid to say that. But if I, for example, see somebody you now who I consider to be very trustworthy using the product and say, okay, the product is very good and all of that, then I might be um, more influenced and or have a better view of the company to say that they're more authentic and they're very rootsy and very uh, organic. All right, events, you can have conference, presentation of keynote address, day of community service event. In our case, in the case of Excel, so we do graduation, we do um, we do award ceremony, we do sports day, we do the um, we do social outreach, we do the Ted Dwyer Classics, we do principals hour, we sometimes have um, we sometimes we do have um, college month or college week things like that. So those are the events that we use to kind of maintain a public, a positive image in the mind of our students and, um, and other stakeholders. Now that is always measured, it happens that way. And in terms of being guided by research now, 
what what really should happen in a normal company is that when you have these particular events you really should carry survey to gauge the reaction of um, participants to see if and then and then PRNO can determine okay do I need to change the nature of the event do I need to make it shorter longer do I need to make it a little bit more interactive or whatever all right sponsorships you find that a lot of companies sometimes or even entertainers and artists are sponsoring people's um, people to go to study to school um, at college for example Shensia the other day she sponsored I think two college students two university students there's an article about that her sponsoring um, university students. And these things are done primarily to achieve public relations objective. All right. Um, award programs, winning an industry product of the year award, nominating customer for an outstanding achievement award. And many times you have companies actually, not just national awards, but they also have their internal awards. For example, that might say employee of the month. Right, and the, those things are deliberately done. It is again, it is part of public relations. All right, because you want to motivate your staff. And remember, mo, um, public relations is not just done by the public relations officer. The public relations officer creates the, the overall objective and strategy, and is actually ex executed by the public relations officer or the public relations department in collaboration with other persons. All right, crisis management. Example: oversee customer communication do a service outage or a product recall, um, execute action plan associated with an environmental disaster. So crisis management, JPS always is in crisis management mode. You know, sometimes when people have no light or they get they have their, their light bill has, gone, um, has increased exponentially. Um, there was a case where in one part of Jamaica outside of JPS, people were not, people were not able to access um, tap water, so NWC came under the eye of many Jamaicans, and of course, again, they have to be putting out a lot of press releases, and they have to use not just the newspaper, but no, they have to use new new media. There are times when NCB people can't access their pay, or they're not able to access money in their account, and of course, they're on social media trying to respond to people. All of that is part of crisis management. Um, advantages of public relations the opportunity to amplify key messages and milestones. So when PR activities are well aligned with other marketing activities, um, organizations can use PR to amplify things they are trying to communicate via other channels. For example, a press release about a new product, for example, can be timed to support a marketing launch of the product and conference with the product. So in other words, again, uh, when we look at the organizational structure there, you can look at um, a structure, an organizational structure that, that is cross-functional. In other words, you have different departments that are working together for the same objective. All right, believable. Because publicity seems to be more objective, people tend to give it more weight and find it more credible. Paid advertisements are seen with a certain amount of skepticism. And again, I say that we have to be very careful in terms of when you talk about, well, paid advertisement in terms of, in the, in the instance of marketing. Employee pride, organizing and or sponsoring charitable, charitable activities or community events can help with employee morale and pride. And also to just build the, the relationship you have with a particular community. And if C you know too that many, for example, the Jamaica Constabulary Force know they are not just they are using social media to achieve their public relations objective um, by showcasing them helping women, you know, helping um, children, not not helping many men. I don't know why you know in Jamaica we tend to have this. If a man helps another man, is there somewhere along the line there's some homosexuality involved? But you see that they are trying to. Um, well, they have to to a lot of, to, to to much to their to their um, credit have really chiseled away at the negative um, public image that they have. Engaging people who visit your website and in terms of public um, in terms of PR, you find that many companies know you even have what is called chatbots. Um, anybody has ever heard the term chatbots? Yes, sir. Right. So many companies have chatbots, and the chatbots are there to kind of respond to persons, especially when people who are, you know, the physical human being is not able um, to, to answer their responses. And another thing that they are using too in terms of websites is what is called prog programmatic um, um, communication, where when you buy a particular product from a company, you might, um, they, the way they organize their, their, their system, which is called customer journey, you get, for example, an email congratulating you or just informing you about how you can use the product or different ways of how you can use the product. All right, all of that falls under the realm 
of public relations and shows you how um, cross-functional the roles of PR is with marketing. Disadvantages of public relations, it can be expensive. Public relations can be expensive. This thing that is free is absolute madness. All right, to pay for TV is very expensive. To get onto TV, especially during prime time, is very expensive. Let's just say that we want Mr. McCarthy, our principal, to be, um, we have a new program at Excelsior and we want the principal to be interviewed during prime time or on TVJ or CVM. You're going to pay a lot of money. It's not marketing, it is public relations, but it's very expensive. All right. <clears throat> There are times to when they accompany Mrs. De Mark, meaning that it could be that, for example, um, one, you might choose the wrong media to communicate with, uh, with the public. It could be that your communication is considered tone deaf. It is not in keeping or does not reflect um, what people want to hear at a particular time. All right, I'm sure the Director of Public Prosecution's office would but probably needs to hire a public relations officer because many times the office and, and the actual director um, are accused of things that they have no control over. And people you know, create all kinds of conspiracy theories um, on social media, um, demonizing and, and uh, belittling the office. So a public relations officer now would be there to explain to the public that the DPP has a particular role to play and that she actually relies on the evidence um, or the office relies on the evidence that is provided um, by police officers, for example. All right, so those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of public relations. So pu public relation worker assignments, writing and editing. In PR, you have to be able to write and write at a certain level. This is why many companies, even if the person is trained in PR, sometimes they prefer to choose a journalist over the PR officer because journalists are trained to write. All right, um, media relations. And I, I won't go through all of this because I have a different discussion. So another thing that we need to um, look at is where does public relation fall within a company? Where does it fall within a company? And in order to, to actually answer that, you actually have to look at the different types of organizational structures. Um, have you guys, are you familiar with the, different, the types of organizational structures? I think if you're in third and fourth year, you should have been introduced to it in the intro to management. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, can you remind us what you know about organizational structures? If you remember anything at all. It provides guidance, um, allows persons to know who they who reports to who, mm -hmm. um, it allows for easier ease of communication and problem solving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. So there are four. Yes, go ahead. I was also going to say it um it gives a structure on how activities should flow or coordinate within the organization. Yes, very true, very true. Right. So four types uh, of, of, of organizational structures. And you might find different book, different texts or different organizations use it, um, use different um, wording or different expressions, or even have more than four. All right, so one is functional, and it says for the functional, no, it divides the company into departments. And I'm sure you find that many government entities are actually, their organizational structure is very functional. So you have the boss, the CEO at the top, and then you have the senior managers, and then you have managers um, and so forth going down. All right, so organized based on a company's key functions. So sales, marketing, engineering, um, things like that, all right? And as this says, a bureaucratic organizational structure divides the company into departments. And even where I work at a university, I find the, 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 the functional organizational structure a little bit too bureaucratic because I want to talk to marketing and I have to go to my supervisor who doesn't know anything about marketing and cannot answer my questions. But you say, oh, you need to fill out this form and all kinds of bullshit. And I'm like, okay, leave it alone. 
All right, and uh, anybody works at a company that, that, that uses this model, that is fun the organizational structure is functional. I guess that's a no. All right, divisional organized based on the company's key products. So you find that a lot of private companies are organized this way. All right, so product one, let us say product one um, is, let us say butter. Um, product two, let us say is beverage. Product three, let us say it's this. So divisional, I'm almost sure that Grace Kennedy is organized. This is a, this this is the OS that they use, organizational structure that they use, divisional. Because I'm almost sure. Does anybody know or anybody works at at, at Grace Kennedy that can kind of give us an insight? Or do you work at a company that you think is divisional in terms of the structure? Yes. Which one? No, sir, I'm saying no. Oh, okay. So you find that a lot of private sector companies, uh, especially the ones that are involved in the food industry, uh, whether it be beverage or, or like a Grace Kennedy, in my mind, I'm almost sure Grace Kennedy is one because they have several products and it's the easier, that would be the model in really to, to kind of, for the business to make sense, right? So you have a product manager, um, you have somebody that is in charge of this product and that person kind of runs their own little mini company and everybody reports to that person. And then that manager reports to the CEO. So there's a meeting between the senior managers now. So I report on butter, you report on milk, you report on, 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 on let us say, bag juice. So we know exactly what is happening um, in terms of the company and in terms of whether or not they're meeting their objectives, in terms of sales and all of that, and whether we need new staff, things like that. <laughs> Sorry. Matrix organized based on cross-functional teams and functions. And this now you'll find um, in what I would want to call like entertainment or even yeah, creative enterprises. Um, even in a marketing company or a communications company, it would be very cross-functional. In other words, PR has to do something uh, in order for marketing to achieve its objectives. It has to work collaboratively with public relations. You find that everybody's kind of working together Right, so there's a kind of interconnectedness and interdependence between and among the different departments or the different offices. All right, and for flat, organized based on self-management and a lack of managerial structures. In this one, it is, it's more for small companies. Like um, I used to work at a company in Canada called um, grad bone and it was very it, it really had this model where we just had one ceo per se and or a manager and all of us were actually at the same level we were kind of at the same level and you can also find flat um within an office so you might have an office like the office of marketing media and and, and, and communication at excelsior i was the the dean and then below you had the marketing officer, the public relations officer, and the events and protocol officer. It was kind of that model, and they were all equal in terms of their rank. No one was they none of none of them reported to the other. They all reported to me, and that model is still um, is still the same. All right, which organizational structure is better for a PR department to do its work? Which one of these models would you say works better, um, or would you recommend if you were to? Um, be advising a company about where they should put, which model organizational structure they should use when considering um, a public relation to include a public relations department. So I would say the functional. Right. If, all right. So the matrix um, or the cross-functional organizational structure. Any specific for any? Why would you choose that one? Sir, I'm thinking just as well, you separate marketing as an entity on its own, you do something similar for public relations. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I, I, can you say a little bit more? Because if I say that they're cross-functional, what does that mean? So as in marketing will be working alongside 
public relations. Mm -hmm. Right, and and they probably will be working with, with sales as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They might be working with sales because marketing is going to bring in the marketing is going to bring in the leads and sales is going to convert the leads. But um, public relations also need to put out some information about the product, about how to use it, some YouTube videos, stuff like that. So they're all kind of working together to achieve the same um, business objective. <clears throat> all right. Uh, any questions, guys? Or is it okay? Clear? Clear, yes, sir. Okay. So PR in an organization, and these are different um, businesses or examples of PR in an organization. So in this instance, senior officer, public relations, and, and they have an assistant, and then you, know, you have the, the, the communication, the officer, communications and relations officer. You have the communications and relations officer. So this person is internal. So they deal with internal communications and relations. This person is external. They would deal with outside stakeholders and that person actually has an assistant. Um, in this case, why they might need a librarian is because they might need access to a lot of content and, and it depends on the nature of the company. In this instance, this more looks like, an, uh, like a government entity. So Department of Bioregion, right? So we have education, legis legislative, indigenous sovereignty, commerce, and then we have public relations, right? So they, in other words, this they have to put out a lot of information to the public, a lot of information. And it means that they have to have an actual de dedicated department to help them to do that because they have to manage the information flow and the accuracy of the information and the way the information is packaged and having spokespersons on behalf of the department because they might be doing a lot of research, they might be going to the corporate country and people are getting upset or they might have, um, they might be telling people do not kill the crocodiles if, if, if you, even if you see them and they have to, and they're also, this, the, P, the public relations department would have to come up with a strategy for public education, a whole range of stuff. Then this is a different model. Public relations manager has an assistant, and then you have what I would want to call the line staff. So it is broken down into event unit, relations unit, social media unit, communications unit. And again, these models are based on the size and complexity of an entity. All right. Any questions? <clears throat> no, sir. All right, so another thing now that we need to be very mindful of are the roles and responsibilities of a public relations officer. Do we realize how long this is? Extremely, yes. <laughs> so you're responding to requests for information, establish and maintain relationships, writing press releases and other media communications, planning or directing the development of programs to maintain favorable public and stakeholder views, coaching client representatives in effective communication. In other words, anybody who's going to go on radio and TV, you have to coach them, give them the talking points, studying the, ob the organization's objectives, promotional policies, and needs to build public relations strategies that influence public opinion, uh, preparing and editing organizational publications, which means um, there's a lot of writing involved, and it means that the person needs additional skills, updating and maintaining web content. Again, now you see that the ordinary, the traditional public relations officer would not work in this current age because now because there's new media and there's digital media, you have the, the public relations officer now has to turn to these particular platforms and must be able to use them and, and know how to use them. Conferring with managers to identify trends and gaps and, and group interests and provide advice on business decisions. In other words, are these business decisions in the best interest of the company and how is it that we explain it, especially if it is a poison pill or something that is very difficult for the public to swallow. And then when you look at the, 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 when you look at, no, the requirements, notice they like to say many companies prefer somebody with a degree in journalism than marketing because marketing and public relations are not the same things. And the skills that you learn as a PR when you're being trained as a public relations officer are very different from marketing. They are not the same skills. All right, experience handling a press conference. In other words, organizing the press conference, because sometimes you're not the actual person actually speaking. It is the, the, the principal and all of that, those are the persons who are speaking. So how do you handle um, a press conference? Um, which media houses do you send the press release to? And how do you, for example, um, what kinds of, how do they answer a whole range of stuff? 
Ability to pitch to the media, meaning that when you write a press release, you should know how to write it in a way that the media would have an interest in publishing it. All right, so notice now um, a lot of rules and responsibilities and, and the requirements are, are extensive. This is another, um, this is a job description now, if they are going to hire somebody and what they have shown you now is the organizational structure, right? So the title is Senior Public Relations Officer. This is the department, this is the division, and you're responsible, uh, responsible to the communications manager and they tell you exactly what you're supposed to do. And you see where you fit. Senior Press and PR Officer, you fit right here. So you answer to the communications manager who answers to the head of that unit. And you can see that this, this looks like a government, co government company. It looks very broad or a very extensive company. Um, again, no, it, the changing face of public relations, no longer one-way communications, but no, you have to communicate in two-way or I'd want to say in an omnichannel way. So public relations officer originally had traditional PR skills. These were the traditional skills, little or no digital experience, doesn't use data, digital tools or other new channels to tell the story. Um, audience uses old school media database, message talks at audiences about old school channels, traditional media measurement, success measured by traditional column, inches, sentiment or other vanity. Not working anymore. No, the new PR person or the modern PR person has to have digital skills. Profile digital savvy understands the power of combining an integrated channel approach to ensure work is optimized for search and browse mode. In other words, a person also needs to understand how Google search engine works, is um, how to do what is called search engine optimization as well as search engine marketing. You need to understand that even though you're not doing it yourself because what you're doing, you're using marketing platforms to achieve your public relations objectives. Very, very, very critical. Audience uses traditional media plus targeted special um, journals plus influencers plus online experts plus segmented audiences who match brands target audience. So in other words, you have to be able to also dissect your demographic, um, your audience or your stakeholders and, and, uh, and create messages for them. So even if it is the same message, you might have to um, tailor it towards the different audiences in a different way. Messages, message creates authentic quality content spe specifically geared for search and browse. Again, this is going back to the whole notion of search engine marketing and using keywords in, for example, press releases, in, for example, any posts that are put on social media so that when people are searching, your brand comes up. Channels uses digital tools, data insights. This goes back to the, the data analytics that I spoke about. So these are the modern skills that a public relations officer needs to have. No longer the traditional um, mode of doing things. And here they're giving you some additional um, um, skills for the PR officer. Monitor social media. And we spoke about social listening. I've talked about keyword search. I've spoken about um, search engine optimization. I've spoken about um, visual literacy. And again, visual appeal is important. I've talked about original content creation. You're not creating the content, but you should be able to give direction to the content developer or the brand manager to develop the content. Um, video or audiovisual content is very, very important because it's far more engaging. And I showed you the example from School of Tourism, social, social advertising, in other words, using, um, using social media as a way to achieve your public relations objectives, influencer relationships, you're getting persons to kind of endorse the brand in um, to say that Excelsior is a very good school. Sometimes we use student ambassadors, media analysis. In other words, what is being said about the school or about the college, about the product, about the services, about the company itself in the media space. Um, so they are basic, these are things that, these are skills now that are, that a public relations officer within the, the, this era would need. Any questions? Okay. Uh, don't want to touch this yet. Don't want to touch this yet. All right. Are there any questions? <clears throat> no, there are no questions. No question. Do we understand everything so far? 
Still processing, but so far so good, sir. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop here. I don't want to touch the other things because some of the content that they created, I didn't like it. So I kind of created um, this, these, the, the ones I created were my own, um, depending on what was on the, the, the what were so in, included in the learning objectives. So let's look at the learning objectives again. So we say examining different publics of public relations. We spoke about that. We did talk about um, the advantages and disadvantages of public relations. Assess the organization of a public relations department and its personnel. We did talk about that by looking at the job description and things like that. Um, we are going to explore the others now on Thursday about uh, analyze the importance of ethics in public relations and explore strategies for crisis management. And I might, I, I in that class, I might give you a practical exercise to just create a, 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 a crisis management plan or action plan for um, an artist. Let's say Ioctin, you know, is is allegedly associated with a particular gang that is on trial. Um, or for um, Maka Diamond, who there was a, 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 a quote unquote leak of, a, of her, of, a, of an intimate moment that she's involved in, or a crisis management action plan for um, Popcorn's brother, who was allegedly performing a certain act on, you know, um, a sexual act. Uh, because these are all things that PR officers. Um, Part of what you do is managing crises and or preventing them. So you actually have to create the actual crisis management plan and you have to be constantly monitoring what is happening in the media um, and in the traditional space to ensure that the image of the brand or the company is constantly in, 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 um, in the highest regard and also to constantly be carrying out, for example, brand equity research, which is really measuring the sentiments of the public and the, and, the, and the stakeholders that you serve and how they feel about the brand. Okay. Um, Sir? Yes. This quick question. Um, this is my first class, so forgive me if you answered it already. Do we have a final exam for this course? I've answered that question so many different times. You have a practical final exam. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, what I are you in the WhatsApp group? No, sir. All right. I am going to share. Can I? If I share the link, no. Can you join? I should be able to. All right. So let me share the link so that you can join. And what I will do, I'll just reshare the course outline and reshare some of the stuff that is there. But also, to um, information is on Canvas. <clears throat> Not everything I put in, I use in the class is on Canvas because I invite group via link, yes. No, that's not what I want. I want copy link, okay. Hmm. Okay, not that. All right, tell me when you have joined. I, um, Romario, can you add this person, please? I don't, I can't add you via um, phone. I don't do the number thing. I can only invite people via the link. Because <clears throat> I have to okay. save. Um, somebody just posted their number in the, in the chat. So I don't know if you want to add them for me. Or I don't That's know if you have true. added that person for, um, but I've shared the share the link, the, the WhatsApp group link in the chat. Mario, could you add me as well, please? Okay, no Thank you. All right. Um, if we have no other questions, oh yes, let's just finally um let's just remind ourselves about something. Let me share screen. Where is it? Yes, it is. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. All right. So for now, this is room one, which is group one. This is group two. This is group three. So group one, you're doing um, Doggy Drago. Draco. That's what he calls his name. Group two, you're doing Leo. I need to confirm with Leo or I might give you red and Sorry, sorry but we're seeing the course outline. Oh, you're not seeing the other thing? Hold on. No. Okay. Let me go again. 
All right, you're seeing, you're seeing, are you seeing now? You're seeing the course outline. All right, let me put it in the chat. It's just an image of the groups. I screenshot it, where is it? It would be here. Let's just scroll up. No, why does it always giving me this hard time though, Jesus? That's not it, that's from International Business. Oh, here. Is this it as well? Yeah. So this is one. And this is two. So, so for now, tentatively, these are the groups. I'm going to put it as well in the WhatsApp group. So let me just put it in the WhatsApp group right now. So, Sir, are you, you shared something apart from the course outline a while ago? Um, in the chat, but I'm going to put it in the WhatsApp group. So do we have any fathers in the, in the, in the, in the class? Any fathers? So I've, I've shared the groups in the, in the, in the, um, in the WhatsApp group so that you're very much aware and you know the, all right, so group one, you're working with Dougie Drago, Draco. Group two, you're working with Leo. I need to confirm with Leo if anything has switched to Red Hands. Um, group three, you're working with Oski. He's a past student actually of Excelsior. Did his bachelor's degree in the School of Business. And group four, you're working with DK or D Chrome. All right, so just make some, reach out to the to the RTs. Um, they're expecting, um, expecting you. So, all right, guys, have a good night. I am so tired. It's after 10 in Canada. No, it's almost 10 o'clock in Canada. All right. Night, everybody. Night, Good sir. Night. Good night, sir. Night. Night. If you're not in a group, just communicate it in the WhatsApp group, all right? Oh, Lord, I'm tired.